Good afternoon and welcome to the vibe. I mean, the author life. It's now the author life. No new podcast episodes, but we still continue rocking and rolling with the arts. And uh, reading and writing are a few of my favorite things. Um, I used this microphone uh, yesterday and I, I kind of like it. I like the sound of my voice. Some ASMR vibes. <laughs> ASMR is like, whoa, the trend now is very interesting. Um, wow. So the last three years have been an epic experience as a writer, as a person though. Whoa. So I need to take time or breaks because, um, you know, like I've been through a lot the last three year, three years, as if my entire life prior to three years ago, as if that wasn't challenging enough, you know what I mean? But everything really does happen for a reason. And I'm happy to be sharing my side of the story. So there are no new podcast episodes but I was going over some papers and I've decided to um, include some topics for the YouTube channel or up on Facebook. Um, right now, I don't feel comfortable with the Facebook Lives and things like that just because, you know, I have to grow. This is my isolation season and um, I'm healing, growing, trying to balance once again and um i you know with faith we can do all things you know and that's found with christ we do all things that's found in philippians y'all but the topic of the hour is dating romance and why i don't date you think that the reason i don't date is because of the feminine behavior in today's man no 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 it's also the women. And you know, um, my mother predicted all of this um, three years ago too, the apocalypse. Uh, she quoted, I love quoting people, books, things like that. Remember, we're in a free country. So she said, men's want to be like women and women want to be like men. That's true. That is so true. Today's female is very, very masculine, competitive, and jealous, okay? And that brews danger, okay? And I know that society likes to think that men are mm, oh, so buff. Ugh, ugh. Look at my cars. Ugh, ugh. I got muscles. But no, um, the true danger really are women, okay? And this is found in the Torah, in the Bible, and the Quran. So it's not saying that all women are bad, but it's more of a warning in how you raise your children, you know? We don't force gender what society deems what is a male supposed to act like, what is a female supposed to act like. That's not what it is. That's conditioning, okay? You have the freedom to be whoever you want to be, right? But if you're claiming something like heterosexual, you need to understand that that comes with not only your, you know, like that comes with behavior. How does a heterosexual male behave? And how does a heterosexual female behave? And so I have chosen to not date, okay? And the reason why actually happened three years ago. Three years ago, I went on a date. And after that date, I was like, nah, this is for what I'm trying to do. This is not it. This is not the, that's not, that's not it. 
that is actually concubine behavior and borderline escort service type of behavior. And I'm not here for that. I am not here for that. Okay, so now this topic, the dating romance, I was actually, when I was podcasting, it was on my to-do list to have like a ball, a player's ball or speed dating, like have events like that. I have um, a lot of history in hospitality, so it's very easy for me to contact the properties and you know book a, a meeting room or an event room. Um, but to be honest, with the behavior of men and women, I pull back. I pull back, you know, and I couldn't do it three years ago. So now what has happened, right? Why are men behaving like females and why are women behaving like males? That's that right there is we're still trying to figure that out. Okay. But it has a lot to do with how you raise your children. You know, what kind of example are you setting for your child? And to be honest, these are things that I should have learned with my son, but it took me to have a daughter to like, really get the picture like listen if you don't fix your life your daughter will end up like you and that's something that i do not want not because i'm a bad person but because i've been through it i've been homeless i've been in the strip club world like you know i've been abused you know and that's something that i don't wish for any child but it took me to have a daughter to kind of like realize, listen, you need to change your life, you know? And so I began to study three years ago, everything. And so if you watched my latest video on friends, how many of us have them friends? If you watched that video, I was um, suggesting that those that engage in the spiritual realm, the tarot readers, the high priest, whatever you want to be, baby girl, whatever you want to be, but you got to make sure you're educating yourself. And I said, you can find books on amazon.com, school books, medical books is what I'm saying. You need to know everything before you engage in that realm. So this book here, the brain book second edition development function disorder health and so over the years i never threw out my school notes my books and stuff like that so i have demographics and evidence that suggest there's a major concern in my community now this is not putting down the puerto ricans is not that and it's not even trying to insinuate that all white people are good people. No, 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 no. It's not that either. What I'm trying to let my people know is that ignorance is found in Europe. Okay? Ignorance is not found on the island prior to colonization. Ignorance is not found in my United States studies prior to colonization. After colonization is when, and, and my, you guys got to wake up because we're in 2024 and the behaviors of yesterday no longer work with the advancements in technology resources, the behaviors of yesterday no longer works. And so I study the brain, the body, everything. And so where I'm concerned with my people and it's not only the, the new york puerto ricans it's this is found in european behavior as well you know so it's like very confusing because we can't talk about racism we can't talk about anything until we rid the ignorance in our own community you know what i mean so where i'm focused on is the frontal lobe, okay? 
the frontal lobe is right here, right here. Okay, and so what are the frontal lobe functions? Well, the frontal lobe is where you kind of like communicate how I'm going to say what I'm going to say. You know, I'm going to talk to you this way. I'm using this. And so what happens with drugs and alcohol, drugs like cocaine and alcohol block this here. And so when that's blocked, it delays how you speak. You might even speak gibberish. Um, then where I'm also concerned is in the crown, the parietal lobe, because this is where you get your information. That's the crown, the soft spot. It's like the last part of our body to fully like develop. And so it's very important in what we expose our children to, because what I'm seeing, I'm sorry, is the generation of bottle fed babies that were bottle fed, um, Pepsi and Kool-Aid smoking Newports, you do Coke or your f parents did cocaine and all of that affects you. Okay. And you need to understand that lying is wrong. You need to understand that attacking and targeting someone is wrong. And if you just focused here, you would begin to chill is what I'm saying. And so, um, this is a very important, the parietal lobe is, is here, here, here. And that's the last part of our body that really sutures up when we're growing. So it's very important in what we are exposing our children to. Okay. And so what that, that really then, then that will determine your behavior. Okay. And then we have not only is how we was brought up, but then we have society. All right. They put out the bars, the clubs and things like that. And so he's just not that into you, right? Has a lot to do with dating and players and things like that. And so what players need to remember is that if you engage with too many of the opposite sex, you're going to be behaving like who you engage with. And for us ladies, it makes sense because if, when I used to work in the office, um, all of us would eventually get our period around the same time. So there's definitely a lot of chemical uh, imbalances right now that a man doesn't know what, what a gentleman is. And a woman doesn't know her place. And it's like, Wow. Wow. But we keep going in faith and I'm happy for these developments, you know, because damn, you know, damn. As a writer, damn, you know. So he's just not that into you. I decided to read this book again from the beginning because I get so emotional, baby. <laughs> Every time I think. <laughs> so I want to do karaoke. I want to do events, but I have to take care of myself first, you know? So before you decide on having fun and stuff like that, make sure everything is good. You know, nothing, we don't strive for perfection. I'm not here for that. I don't strive to be perfect. I'm just striving to live in peace, you know? And so this book got me emotional when the topic of marriage came up. Girl, guys will use anything to get what they want. You have to understand that they will even use marriage just to get you. And that's not 
what dating should be. You know, dating should be getting to know each other to then decide if this is someone you want to see. It should not be, let me get this person in bed by any means, you know, by any means. And it's like, I pray that the shit I've been through are for karmic lessons that I needed to learn about my community, my family, my life. You know, um, I'm reading twin, well, I already read it, Twin Flames and Karmic Relationships by Sylvia Moon. Um, that was a book that I had, you, you know, I've done some podcast episodes on and I read online, but um, I'm using it as a guide in my own experience. Because with every relationship, there is karma, karmic debt. Every relationship really does happen for a reason. And uh, the less you date, the less karmic debt you acquire. All right? So that's the one night stands, the booty calls, the cheating. That all acquires karmic debt for your life. And that involves suffering. And nobody wants that. So it's best to just like lay low sometimes, educate yourself and keep it moving. All right. So this book actually became a movie. So we have a page on Indiegogo. All right. I'm not here saying that it's going to be a movie, but you never know. You never know. I look up to people like Sylvester Stallone the writer of all the Rocky movies. And he had no money when he first wrote Rocky, the first Rocky movie. He had no money. He had to sell his dog in order to fund this project. He later got the dog back though. And that is inspiration for me, you know? So I just keep writing and you never know what the future holds. So he's just not that into you. For ages, women have come together over coffee, cocktails, or late night phone chats to analyze the puzzling behavior of men. Greg Berent and Liz Tuchilo are here to say that despite good intentions, you're wasting your time. And uh, men are not complicated, although they'd like you to think they are. And there are no mixed messages. You know, there's a saying that men are like dogs, but I don't, I, I guess it's derogatory, but they're, the way that men think is very different than the way a woman thinks. Um, they, it's like a map. They have good memory, um, but, and they're, they're very straightforward, but you have to be like open-minded and listening, you know, because they will tell you, they will tell you, <laughs> they will show you, but are we aware the behavior in women that I have witnessed outside of the strip club? Oh my God. For me to be appalled, let me tell you, for me to be appalled is, is crazy out there. It is absolutely crazy. And I'm glad that I don't work in the city anymore because it was getting too real out there. And what I've seen was, is like, why are you dressing like a stripper if you never been to the strip club? What the fuck is wrong with females? Let me tell you. I tried to keep my composure. I tried to be the elder. Um, I was even going to go to the strip club, back to the strip club world. Um, as a writer, though, as a customer, to just sit there and see how um, these clubs have evolved in the last 14 years. Because damn, damn. You know what I'm saying? Damn. All right. The truth is he just might not. <laughs> the truth may be he's just not that into you. 
And that's kind of the problem that I have with guys because I've always been straightforward and honest. And um, because men are like conquistadors, sometimes they disregard what you just told them. You know, for example, my last relationship, I told him that I have um, like trauma um, and stuff. So why would you then try to act like I am disturbed when I told you that already before, like one of our first dates, you know? So the dating scene is really not for me because, you know, they can't, I'm sorry, let me just show the book again. They, they, for some reason, um, for some, for some reason, they just cannot comprehend for some reason, even though I'm telling you the truth, I'm telling, I'm being straightforward with you and you can't, you cannot comprehend that because you have a blockage here. And if you have a history of drugs like cocaine, um, ecstasy, they even doing fentanyl now, that's going to block all of this. And you're not going to be able to determine she's being honest with me. She's being real. You're not going to be able to. And then on the parietal lobe up here, how you was raised, what your life experience have been affect your behavior. Okay. So what do you do? When you realize some shit, what do you do? You stop everything. Stop dating. Stop doing the drugs. Stop drinking. Clear your body completely from toxins and toxic people. You will discover yourself. Like for me, um, when I stopped dating back in 2021 and I started like working on myself, I realized that I really loved crystals and stones and gems and things like that. So when you focus on yourself, you'll be able to know what kind of partner you would like. You don't have to figure it out by fucking. <laughs> that acquires a lot of karmic debt. All right. So it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy out there. But this is a great book for ladies to understand that sometimes perhaps he's just not that into you. And when a guy, just like a dog, when a guy is not into you, he it's there's nothing you can do. There is nothing you can do to convince him that you're the one. You cannot change a man. You can't. I've tried. You can't. So it's best to work on yourself. That way, when you are ready, it's nah, they got to meet me at my level. At, you got to come up here now. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lower myself down for you. Or if you fuck around and fuck with the wrong one, you have to learn why you shouldn't have in the first place. Like, it's crazy. It's nothing but entrapment. Uh, they trap you. Like, now is I trap you into this relationship. And let me tell you, historically, it's really been women trapping men. But it has been revealed that men trap women too. And it's like, what the fuck? This is not dating. This is something else. This is something else. You know, so as a podcaster, I was thinking of having events that would be like inspirational, you know? And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we will do that because I want my community to have fun in a healthy and safe fashion. You know, there's a time and a place for everything. And if you want to get down like that, grimy, disgusting, dirty, go to the club. At least you'll make more money that way. You know, the job, the workplace, this is not a, a, a dating. This is not where you find your mate. You got to understand that if somebody has the balls to lie on their resume, lie on their application, and you think that's the one for you, no, the workplace is 
to work. And if you want to like engage in that kind of behavior, you got to be mature about it. Be honest about it. You know what I mean? Be honest about it. So this book is dedicated to all the lovely ladies out there whose stories inspired us to write this book. May we never need to write another one. And I'm sorry, Greg. <laughs> I'm sorry, Greg and Liz. We're gonna have you're gonna have to write another one. You're going to have to write another one because these chicks are wild out here. Wild. I had, um, we did a, a podcast episode. This is going to be on the podcast page on Facebook too. We did a podcast episode where, um, I was talking about how we went out for ladies night. It was somebody's birthday. And as soon as the chick got drunk, she begins to call nonstop, nonstop this guy. She even gets my phone to call him back to back, back to back, back. And we all work together. And I'm like, this is, I, I ended up apologizing to the guy. Like, I'm sorry. This is disgusting. And it lets me know that there's a problem in your upbringing. Moms, you got to tell your daughters, she's beautiful. You're special. Save yourself. You got you to gotta tell her that. Because these chicks do one thing correct. And they want the praise of, of a God. No, that's not, that's not the way. Okay. You receive praise from God and from your home, your love, your loved ones, your family, your children. You don't need to seek praise from anyone out there. Fuck that. You know what I mean? But it's like, whoa, <laughs> these chicks are wild nowadays. And it's found in three of my religious books. So we need to get it together at the very least for the next generation, because I myself don't see myself dating. And if I do get back into dating, I'm very sorry. I cannot date a, a Hispanic male, whatever you want to refer to yourself, Puerto Rican, the none, 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 none of that shit from here. All right. Because it's like they forgot their culture. They forgot where they don't know where they come. They don't know nothing. These people yet they act like they know everything. El más que sabe es un boricua de Nueva York que no tiene que ir a la escuela y sabe todo. Se la saben toda. Se la saben toda. El boricua de Nueva York se la saben toda sin ir a la escuela. Sin ir a la escuela. You believe that shit? That shit is crazy and embarrassing because I've experienced discrimination just because I'm Puerto Rican like you. But I don't conduct myself like you. It's very disgusting what is out there. You know, so let's keep moving in faith because, uh, you know, I have kids and I want a better life for them. You know, I want them to, to be able to date and things like that. I don't want them to be trapped. I don't want them to be abused. I don't want them to be used. So we have to like figure this shit out here. You hear me? Lord have mercy. All right. Chapter one. <laughs> He's just not that into you if he's not asking you out. Girls, fall back. Fall back. Um, I've been known to blow people's phones up, but it's for very different reasons. Um, because I'm petite and soft-spoken and stuff like that, people think that they can intimidate me when that's not the case. That's including guys. So I, I won't hesitate to, to check you. I won't hesitate to defend myself against you. So the, that's really the purpose of my blowing up the phone. But a lot of females do blow up the phone like, like I saw, like I witnessed. You know what I mean? And you have to understand that if he's not contacting you, 
Um, I read somewhere, no response is a response. So you don't have to sit there and figure it out. You just got to understand he's just not that into you. And guess what? It has really nothing to do with you. Um, who knows? Maybe he likes someone else. Maybe he doesn't want to date at the time. Maybe he's a player. You know what I mean? Stop honing in on these dudes. Like, like, get the fuck out of here. Sorry. Because then when they bump into me, they think I'm just like you. See? Because men, the way that they think is very, like, based... I'm trying to do this loosely. It's, like, really more on memory. They have good memory. And so if 10 females are chicken head, birds, and slut, and I'm number 11, they're going to think the same thing. The part where I'm appalled is that I wear my religious hats and they couldn't understand that part. That's this. The part where I'm appalled is that I've gifted you a book that's all about God and you still, that's this here. All right, that's your frontal lobe. You have a blockage in your frontal lobe and you need to figure that out, okay? Because you don't understand, he's just not that into you. And I gotta tell you and be honest, I was one of them chicks. Long ago, I was one of them chicks. <laughs> So the reason why I got this book, right, is because I was trying to get over my beloved ex. Now, where I fucked up is I did not stop dating. You know, that's, that's a typical trauma response. Uh, we get heartbroken and rather than sitting with that pain and dealing with that and then like mourn the loss of that person... Even if they're, you know, even if they're still alive, it's a mourning because someone that you love doesn't want to be with you. So you have to sit with that pain and heal it before you move on to the next. Because what's out there, what has been out there really is nothing but predators. There are predators everywhere. And that's found in Ephesians 6. We walk amongst spiritual forces of evil. All right. And so if you're hopping from to the next, to the next, to the next, you're just going to, you're going to catch, you're going to catch the right one. And um, one day I'll explain how your vibe attracts your tribe. All right. One day I will explain that. So if you've experienced a heartbreak of any sort, fall back be to yourself, heal yourself, feel your pain. You know, like that's real. I know how that feels. You love someone and they don't love you back, but you have to be with, you know, you have to be with them. And so I fucked up with that. I should have stopped dating, pick up a, help, a, a self-help book and then learn from that. So three years ago, that's what I did. I stopped dating, I picked up self-help books, and here we are today. By no means am I, I'm not, girl, girl. <laughs> I'm still trying to get my life once again with these people. And that's the karma that you suffer when you don't think to, to think about yourself. You know, that's a lesson. That's a major lesson that I had to learn really hard, you know, and um, I'm glad. I'm thankful that I survived. I learned my lesson and I pray that I can help others one day. It says here, he's just not that into you if he's not asking you out. Because if he likes you, trust me, he will ask you out. Another thing that I found... Um, in my quest on this earth is false self-confidence. And again, I got to bring the, the brain book. So I guess I'll keep it up here. Um, the false self-confidence. Because you got to understand the frontal lobe is like your imagination, your thoughts. 
what you're seeing and how that affects you. That's here. That's here. And um, what I've experienced is false sense of confidence. Like, why at the workplace? Like, at my last place of work, um, this person was almost like the vibe that he's given me is he was certain that I was a sure thing. And I don't understand how he thought that where I'm like trying to understand is the way that men think. And possibly because today's ladies are loose, he probably thought that I was loose too. And because today's ladies want to act like they're spiritual and even religious, but not, not be, he probably thought that's discrimination, you see. But the way that you combat that is through discernment, right? And so, for example, at the workplace, you should not think of that place as a hookup spot, okay? And if you are interested in someone, then you need to be respectful about that. Especially if the female is respectful, then you should be respectful back. All right. And then the false sense of confidence is, do you guys see yourself? Late men and women, do you guys see yourself? Y'all are overweight, eating out junk food all the time. This guy did his fronts were all jacked up. Like you, you need to go to the dentist. You don't need to be dating. You need to go to the fucking dentist. And it's like, you know, out here in the streets, we, you know, I'm, I'm like a dime piece, a 20 piece. So why, if you're like half of that, or <laughs> why would you think that I'm the one? Like, why would you think that? You know, and that's where I have my challenges with my community. And if you're doing cocaine, ecstasy, pills, fentanyl, drinking a lot, it's going to block your frontal lobe. And sometimes that will, you won't, you won't even be aware of where you are. You get into jibber jabber type of talk, um, lying. It, it, it's very disturbing. Okay, it's very disturbing, but I just want to put it out there that the workplace is not, that's not the field. Okay, you want to pick up somebody, go to the club, go to the bar. Don't do it with your colleagues like that because that leads to sexual harassment, um, you know, allegations that you don't know. Like, that's the problem that I have with my community, and that's a frontal lobe. They think that I'm just like them, but I'm not, you know, but we are Puerto Rican. It's very disturbing. So I need God to, like, step in on this one because I fear for my daughter. Like, I'm here trying to be professional, and you're here disrespecting me without even being aware that you're being disrespectful. That's the part. They're not aware of their awareness. And that's ignorance. Okay? So ladies, if he likes you, he will ask you out. Trust. All right? Many women have said to me, Greg, men run the world. Wow, that makes us sound pretty capable. So tell me, why would you think we would we could be incapable of something as a simple as, oh, golly, let me start this from the top. It says here, men, many women have said to me, Greg, men run the world. Wow, that makes us sound pretty capable. So tell me. Why would you think we could be incapable of something as simple as picking up the phone and asking you out? All right, so here's the deal for the dating ladies. Um, okay, you could call your, your, your dude, um, but don't blow up his phone. When, when it's about that time, the booty call, twice. That's it. 
because one time you could play you know you could play it like oh i wasn't sure you know or the phone drop whatever the case but if you're doing it like that's crazy that is crazy and then the male is naturally going to associate all females like that and so we'll have a challenge in the men respecting women yeah you set the tone ladies you set the tone that's the part where i fucked up i I, i'll set the tone but then i'll start conforming nah doesn't work that way set the tone and back it up and because they're kind of like dogs they'll listen (laughs) they'll listen okay you seem to think at times that we're too shy or we just got out of something Let me remind you, men find it very satisfying to get what they want, particularly uh, after a difficult day of running the world. If we want you, we will find you. If you don't think you gave him enough time to notice you, take the time it took you to notice him and divide it by half. Now you begin the life-changing experience of reading our book. We have put these stories we have heard and questions we've been asked in a simple question and answer format. And I like this book because it also has like a quiz for you. Um, You're lucky. You'll read the following questions and know what they are. Cheers. Excuses that women have made for their unsatisfying situations. If you're not so lucky, we've also included handy titles to clue you in. The maybe he doesn't want to ruin the friendship excuse. Hoo-wee. Dear Greg, I'm so disappointed. I have this friend that I've known platonically for about 10 years. He lives in a different city and recently he was in town for work. So we met for dinner and all of a sudden it felt like we were on a date. He was completely flirting with me. He even said to me as he was checking me out, so what, you're working the whole model thing right now? That's flirting, right? We both agreed that we should get together again soon. Well, Greg, I'm disappointed because it's been two weeks and he hasn't called me. Can I call him? He might be nervous about turning the friendship into romance, Can't I give him a nudge now? Isn't that what friends are for? And let me tell you, the answer is no. All right. You have to understand that friends is is just that, is friends, platonic. And um, could there be a chance of a romance? Perhaps. But that's not should that that's not something that you should strive for with a friend. That's something that you strive for with a mate. With a friend is fun, you know, laughs, talks, and that's about it. Uh, Dear friendly girl, two weeks is two weeks, except when it's 10 years and two weeks. That's how long ago he decided whether or not he could date a model or a girl who looks like one. Can you be a pal and give him a nudge? Nudge away, friendster. But watch how fast that nudge doesn't get a return phone call. And if your dinner date did feel different to him, it's been <clears throat> it's been two weeks. And he's had time to think about it and decide he's just not that into you. Here's the truth. Guys don't mind messing up a friendship if it could lead to sex, whether it be a fuck buddy situation or a meaningful romance. Go find someone that lives in your zip code who will be rocked to the core by your deep conversation and model looks. I hate to tell you, but the whole I don't want to ruin the friendship excuse is a racket. It works so well because it seems wise. That's, that's, you know, that's a player tactic because what they want to do is keep you at bay. All right. And what you need to know, ladies, is if a man says that to you, he doesn't want to ruin the friendship, keep him as just a friend. 
keep him at just a friend. That's letting you know right there. That's letting, that's basically what he's saying is, um, I don't want to deal with you at this time, but if I want to fuck you, I will call you. <laughs> it's just that guys, to be honest, guys are nicer than ladies. So they're not going to talk to you like that. You need to be mature enough to understand what he just told you. You know, I don't want to ruin the friendship is basically letting you know he's playing the field and you're a friend. All right. So it's, you know, like it's up to you. If you want him to play you, then hey. <laughs> but I would say keep him as a friend and that's it. Oh, you know, eventually time tells everything. But when a guy says to you, I don't want to ruin the friendship, that's letting you know. He's not that into you. Sex could mess up a friendship. Unfortunately, in the entire history of mankind, that excuse has never ever been used by someone who actually means it. If we are really excited about someone, we can't stop our ourselves. We want more. If we're friends with someone and attracted to them, we're going to want to take it further. And please, don't tell me that he's just scared. The only thing he's scared of, and I say this with a, a lot of love, is how not attracted to you he is. You know? It happens. Uh, the maybe he, I'm gonna leave this right here. The maybe he's intimidated by me excuse. Dear Greg, I have a crush on my gardener. He's been potting the plants on my patio. It was so hot. I saw him without his shirt on. He was hot. And now I'm hot for him. I brought out some beers and we talked. I think he wants to ask me out, but is afraid because he is my hired man. In this situation, can't I ask him out? And again, with the brain, like we have females acting like men, being bold like that. And then they use the, you know, it's 2024. If I want to, you know, like that, that chicken head. <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't work that way, especially like in your home. And that that's crazy. All right. Because men like dogs get very comfortable right away. Right away inside your home? Nah, man. Nah, man. Dear my secret... And you know what? Because there was a lot of gossip about me and stuff like that. Like, 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 you know. But to be honest, all these fools, nobody asked them to come here. <laughs> nobody asked. Nobody. You know that. Nobody asked you. <laughs> so it's like the extreme or extent that guys have gone to use and abuse me is wild. And I pray that it's for karmic lessons only. I pray that that's not the norm. You know what I mean? But the only way to ensure that this is not the norm is by making sure that I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? So, dear my secret garden, He's capable of asking you out. Haven't you ever seen a porno? Hope he gets there before the pizza guy. But seriously, if he didn't pick up the vibe after the beer garden, it has nothing to do with you being his boss lady. Time to stop and smell the bad news. He's just not that into you. Let me say it again. Oh gosh. Sexual harassment rules and workplace memo notwithstanding, a guy will ask out a woman of higher status if he's into her. He might need a little more encouragement than normal, I'll give you that. You might have to lead Johnny the office boy or Philippe the exterminator to water, but you better not help him ask you out. Once again, ladies, a wink and a smile will do it. Trust. And that's the thing. Girls now, females, they dress like strippers. Girlfriend, I'll take your man and your father in a turtleneck. You lucky I'm not about that life. You don't have to dress that way. 
It's hilarious. And then, like, my experience in the city, there was a, a, a bird, never been to a strip club, looking like a fucking stripper. That's that love and hip-hop shit. You know? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Because men, like dogs, don't need much. When you're dressing like that, you're doing too much already. When you're prowling after them, you're doing too much already. All right? It says here, by the way, why are you dating the exterminator? Just kidding. He's a good guy. <laughs> I love this book, okay? So, yeah, I usually like to make my videos like 30 minutes, but we extended because of the brain issue. Um, but the next time that I pick up the, the book, um, the topic is the maybe he wants to take it slow excuse. And that's typical. <laughs> they want to take it slow, right? And then also they want to take breaks from you here and there. You know, and, and that that is a tactic that um, bothers me and it's disgusting because when you're on your break, right, chances are one or both partners um, are still fucking other people and chances are they are not using protection and then that's like disgusting, you know, and I just can't be involved in that. I can't. So the next time we pick up this book, uh, the maybe he wants to take it slow. <laughs> wow. So yeah, so this movie became, I mean, this book became a movie and um, this chick right here, she's like, I, I relate to her. And then um, this guy, this guy right here. He, he reminds me of, of some guys, like some guys will play the friend role and give you nothing but bad advice. So that way you keep landing on their lap. Like it's very disgusting, but this was a funny, funny movie, great book. And, um, yeah. So before you jump into dating like that, pick up a book. Thank you. Peace. Enjoy the vibe.